Hello and welcome to this month's Heart of the Matter brought to you by Mayo Clinic and the SADS Foundation, the Sudden Arrhythmia Death Syndrome Foundation. I'm Dr. Michael Ackerman and I'm the director of Mayo Clinic's Long QT Syndrome Clinic and our Winland Smith Rice Sudden Death Genomics Laboratory. And I also have the privilege of serving as the president of the SADS Foundation. This month's question comes from Stephanie Thorne, who's originally from the New York area and currently lives in the United Kingdom. Stephanie and her family have type 1 long QT syndrome, and Stephanie is wondering about why is swimming a trigger for long QT syndrome episodes? So Stephanie, thank you for that question, and it's a very interesting issue with respect to swimming and the potential of swimming to trigger a long QT heart rhythm abnormality that could cause a faint or a faint followed by a seizure or a faint followed by sudden death in the water which would otherwise get called a fatal drowning. Now we now know that there's a unique relationship between swimming and one of the genetic flavors of long QT syndrome, namely type 1 long QT syndrome which is the genetic flavor that Stephanie shared with us as having. Now, long QT type 1 is the most common of the genetic subtypes of long QT syndrome. And if there is an individual who has a swimming triggered fainting spell and they're found to have QT prolongation and subsequently diagnosed with long QT syndrome, you can make a bet, about a 90% bet, that that individual has type 1 long QT syndrome. So what's the relationship between swimming and irritating the LQT1 heart? Well, there's a couple of observations that have been made. We first know that in type 1 long QT syndrome, the heart's electrical recharge, recharging system doesn't do its job correctly during adrenaline rushes, during excitement, as the heart rate increases. You and I, if we are normal individuals, as our heart rate gets faster and faster in the setting of adrenaline, our QT system, our recharging system, actually behaves better and better, more efficiently. But that does not happen in somebody with type 1 long QT syndrome. So as they're exercising, or swimming specifically, they are having a delay or some inefficiency in their heart's recharging system, which may set up a window of electrical vulnerability for something to catch that LQT1 heart off guard. Now, is swimming different than dry land aerobics? It may be. Uh, one issue is that compared to the amount of aerobic activity on dry land, your heart rate gets a lot faster during aerobic activity on dry land than it does when you're swimming. So maybe there's a difference in the balance between the control inputs the so-called sympathetic and parasympathetic system. There might be a higher so-called vagal tone when you're swimming. There also is the possibility, depending on if you're swimming in cold water, to have activation of the so-called dive reflex that can slow your heart rate down even though you're exerting a lot of energy. And in fact, there was an elegant study done several years ago that showed if you hooked normal individuals up to telemetry and had them swim or hold their breath and swim underwater, they had more irregular heartbeats, more normal skipped beats than, other, than during other aerobic activities. And so if somebody has long QT syndrome type 1, where their recharging system isn't behaving quite right when they are exerting themselves, and now they're exposing themselves to an activity, swimming, that intrinsically generates more irregular beats, there's now a greater chance that one of those irregular beats will catch the heart off guard while it's recharging itself and then trip up into long QT syndrome's potentially dangerous arrhythmia of called torsades, which could cause a fainting spell. Now, if that happens when you're in the water, the consequences can be devastating, whereas if you have a long QT1 triggered faint on dry land, 10 seconds later, you wake back up and you're fine again. But if that happens in a body of water, not only you have fainted, but now you have submerged, and as a result of that, you could end up with a drowning. And so if there's a swimming triggered event, 
And if that person is found to have QT prolongation afterwards, you can bet a lot that that person has type 1 long QT syndrome. It is important to point out, however, that if there is a swimming triggered faint or a, an unexplained near drowning and the QT interval is perfectly normal, then physicians and families need to be aware and be thinking about a different genetic heart rhythm disease called catecholaminergic polymorphic ventricular tachycardia, or CPVT. And so, Stephanie, I hope this has addressed your question of what is it about swimming as a potential irritant to the long QT heart in general and specifically to an individual with type 1 long QT syndrome. This is this month's Heart of the Matter, and I look forward to being back with you next month. Have a good day.